Hey guys, welcome back to channel Best Place for Long Term Stock Investors. So we're going to try something a little bit new today. So about a few days ago, actually, we have this thing called an NGL link where you can actually ask us questions on Instagram. Totally anonymous. Some of the questions were quite crazy, so we will not go over all of them. Um, however, we will be answering four questions today. Now, before we begin, of course, uh, now of this should be taken as financial advice because we're not professionals. If you want that sort of advice, please speak to a professional. So is there still an opportunity in the palm oil industry? In our upcoming deep dive happening on the 14th of July, we'll be discussing the helicopter view of the industry, which stocks we think are great and bad, and whether the industry still has leg to run. So don't miss out our free early bird uh, discount link will be ending today. So make sure you check out the links and the comments or in the descriptions. Okay, so first anonymous question is how has inflation affect our lifestyle? So I'll go first. Sure. Um, you know, I have a pretty simple uh, life, uh, thankfully, but purely by luck. Um, and that is uh, mostly my expenses will be food, and transport, right? That's the big one. Mm. So for me, the big effect right now, you would think it's food, but actually it's transport. I take Grab a lot for context and it's something like up 70, 80% in cost very but, frequently. But how come actually? Because mm. I thought our petrol for, let's yeah. say if they ever pump raw 95, right. like, I thought it was capped at two ringgit and five cents. So why did they actually increase the price? Because it's supply and demand, right? Number of uh, drivers ah. and, um, and the people requesting for Grab. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, you know, now that COVID is, uh, quote unquote, officially somewhat over, it's an yeah. endemic phase now, people are just coming back and uh, there are not enough Grab drivers. Mm. And so during peak periods, it can get pretty, pretty crazy. So actually in a normal um, area, so to give a sense of what normal is, right? Let's say uh, about one or 1.5 km kind of drive will cost roughly six ringgit. Mm. So that is still true compared to, let's say last year uh, or before all this, right? Before pandemic or even during the pandemic. Um, but now, in normal times, it's also six ringgit. But in peak periods, and sometimes these peak periods can be weird, you know, 20 minute spurts, right? Mm. Like, it's like 6.59, you get, uh, literally before, I've, I've gotten, you know, I checked on the app, like at 7.59, you know, it's this price. And then like 8.05, it's, a, it's like down by 25%. Oh. So it's quite crazy. Okay, okay. But in, in peak periods, yeah. that six ringgit can become 11. Ah, okay. So that's the big uh, one. And of course, uh, in terms of food, you know, uh, there's no doubt, so, right? I just yeah. talked to a friend who has a seafood restaurant. Hey, sorry, he's a seafood supplier. Like every quarter, he will send, uh, he supplies to hotels, right? So every quarter, he will send a revised pricing for his sea bass. <laughs> Five, ten percent per quarter. Wow. Yeah. So how about uh, you? Actually, inflation also didn't really affect my lifestyle because I've been living very yeah. within my means. I don't really spend a lot of things unnecessarily. Um, I don't really see any impact of petrol because of one, because uh, I so far the petrol price has been pretty stagnant. Yes. I mean, it's correct, been correct. at two ringgit and five cent. Hopefully, it stays the same. Hopefully, yep. the government don't like all of a sudden U turn that they say, mm -hmm. "Hey, we no longer subsidize petrol." But actually, that won't. I hopefully it won't happen. Yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, so other than petrol, I think food-wise, I also don't really see an impact because I rarely eat out. I always eat at home. But I did ask my mom on the food prices. So for example, like cooking oil, right? Uh, there's yes. one day I actually went out grocery shopping with my mom. Uh, I, think it, I think it was a one liter kind of uh, cooking oil. And that one liter, right? She told me that last month it was... 30 bucks. Now it's like 40 bucks. Ooh. It's like a 10 ringgit increase, man. I don't know how many percent is that. Is that like a 20, a 10 to 30, uh, 20 percent? That's crazy. Yeah, so it's a huge amount of uh, increase in price. And not only that, actually, uh, I think another question I asked is a chicken, uh, the chicken of price. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, because of the, you know, la, the mm, chicken mm. issue, right, we had recently. So that also actually went up in price. Mm. If I'm not mistaken, I think that one whole chicken, I cannot remember the price really in my head. I think it's around 20 to 30 bucks. Right. Because the place that she buy is a little bit more, I will say maybe it's like an organic chicken or something like that. Right. So 
it's from 30 to 30 bucks increase to like 40, 30, 40 bucks. Also another, yeah, another price increase over there. So okay. definitely food price has been increasing. Uh, although we don't really see it, uh, unless you're checking the receipt every single week, mm-hmm, la, or every mm-hmm. single month, then you'll notice these price changes. La. So yeah, that is actually something that we have been noticing. And I also been tracking my family's expenses and that's how I actually kind of yeah. roughly know how has uh, these price changes actually affected. Uh, our yep. consumption. So, so yeah, I think actually that's about it for yep. inflation. Right. So we move yeah. on to the second question is what stocks are in our long-term portfolio? So the answer, you can get this by hopping onto our SIB program where we give you monthly updates on our portfolio trades, ins and outs. Yeah. Uh, it's also a portfolio run together with our SIB community. So if you want to be part of the program, just check it out in the comments section or description. Yeah. Uh, I think just want to add a little bit more specifically where. Yes. Uh, so in the description, if you notice that uh, below the free segment, yes. there's actually a segment called program. So under yes. the program, you can see there's a, we wrote that SIB 2.0. So that's where our SIB program is at. Uh, so I'm not sure about MJ. Maybe I'll share a little sure. bit of mine. Can. Uh, if you are really that anxious of uh, what our stocks, what, what stocks are we holding? So for me, right, I won't really directly tell you what company I own, uh, but I'll tell you what industry they are actually in. So uh, my company is act that I invested in is actually riding the commodity run. Of course, right now commodity also has been dropping. Yep. But my company doesn't really uh got affected by this movement of uh, commodity prices. They are actually more of a proxy. Uh, our hin hin the industry is actually in the pesticide space. Okay. So anyhow, whether is it uh whether is it gonna be a bull run in the commodity space or there's a bear run, uh, this company will actually will not be very affected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, this kind of movement is very insignificant because their products are necessary and. If you don't have pesticides in your food, uh, okay, actually, fun fact, right? Our According to one of the statistics that I actually researched, uh, do you know that our globally, the food that is actually produced, right, about 40% is actually lost because of this pest. So in order to mitigate this 40% loss, right, they have yep. to put pesticides to prevent it. Mm. Yeah. Because imagine, right, if you just solely focusing on organic farming or whatsoever, right, you definitely, you have to like, sell your crop and make sure that the crop is protected, well protected. And if they are not it's protected- very costly. Yeah, correct. If they are pro- not protected, right? Not using pesticides, right? Definitely in a few days or maybe even weeks, it's a perishable item. So anyhow, indeed, it will be indeed. perish. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that is my company. Uh, maybe you already know yeah, by yeah. now, but I won't be replying like- What's the, what's the, what, what does it start with? Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, it starts with C, nah, just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so question number three is what is the best sector to go into? Now, of course, as we always say, right, nothing we say is financial advice. This is just um, our opinion on what sectors are quite interesting. Hmm. Now, um, for me, commodities is still, uh, I wouldn't say it's the best. Right, I mean, first of all, there are many commodities, yes. right? But I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best, but it still has some sort of momentum going forward mm-hmm. because um, it doesn't seem like the supply situation is fixing as fast as people would like. It is being fixed. So there's still some of that, but I think it's a lot riskier to get into commodities totally already right now because uh, they've had their run already. Yeah. Um, another area that I would say that uh, you should pay attention to, obviously, is the tech sector. Mm. So the tech sector, whether it's US or Malaysia tech, and usually in Malaysia tech, what they really mean is semiconductor manufacturing or right. something related to that. You want to uh, look at them, not to necessarily go into it right now and buy, but you want to look at them because they do represent uh, very um, low valuations right now. Statistically, right? Um, and typically, a, a, a semiconductor sort of cycle in Malaysia works in a two to three year cycle, right? And so, um, right now, we are probably in month number six. So, um, that is why be careful, right? If you're going into tech right now in a big way, but pay attention to it so that when you feel comfortable, 
then you know which companies uh, to really look at. Now, the third uh, sector that uh, is probably definitely worth paying attention to is the retail sector or the consumer sector, right? Uh, for so long under COVID, a lot of uh, companies uh, are actually struggling. Now they are trying to find their feet because, uh, you know, if uh, there's all this demand, right, that there is pent up, and all these companies, especially those that have good balance sheets, that have a decent brand, and that have a you know decent following, these are the guys that are going to do well. And that's probably the last bit, and this is probably the sector that I'm not the most bullish about, but certainly I've been paying to a little bit more attention to, is the finance sector, right? Mm. Because not, and the reason is because, and this is purely anecdote, right? Okay. I am talking to, uh, I, I talk to friends all the time about what they're doing and they're saying, hey, they're like buying houses. And then some of them bought a house just one year and ago and then now it's like, it grew by 10%. Oh. Because again, the pan up demand is not just for consumer goods like uh, food or, or, or equipment yeah, or whatever. Yeah, the metal also. Right, and it's also yeah. for houses, it's yeah. also for cars and motorbikes and all that. So, right. so guess what? Uh, this will represent loan growth hmm. for for the banking sector. I'm not too excited about it because you know the banking sector is quite saturated already. But they were depressed yeah. during COVID, yeah. and so that you might see some reflation. But how about you? Uh, actually, my strategy is very simple. Uh, I won't tell you which sector to silang, but I'll just tell you my thoughts when I see this kind of question. Right? Uh, we basically don't want to see which sector is performing the best right now. Uh, actually, that is my way of looking at things because when you see things that are in a bull run, right, you tend to follow and you want to follow yeah. whichever correct, sectors, correct. right? But to me, I'll actually pay attention to uh, beaten down sectors. So, for example, like uh, like as you mentioned, yeah. the tech sector, the semiconductor manufacturing space. Uh, other than that, healthcare. Mm. Yeah. So although healthcare right now seems a little bit uh, bad right now, like really very bad. Uh, actually, there's also a reason for it. Uh, if you're talking about the gloves industry because of an oversupply, but it's worth paying attention to because they have dropped to a valuation that may be attractive to you or maybe maybe it's not attractive to you yet. But do pay attention to those sectors that actually have been dropped yeah, very massively. Uh, yeah. And also maybe you want to have a look at sectors that actually have been dropped, but there's no reasoning for it. Like for example, like a sudden market crash, 20%. And then for example, like uh, I think I was watching one video on Monish Barbara and he gave a one good example about the 911. Yeah. So so uh, when planes are crashed into the tower, right? There's this business. I I forgotten what's the name, but basically the business is uh they do uh oh, 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 oh this is uh, coffin 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah coffin business are dying, right? yeah more people are dying wow. but then their stocks are like dumping when the night never crash yeah it doesn't make sense yeah. so like this kind of event uh I mean not to say that we should have more nine eleven cases yeah, yeah yeah hopefully not yeah but this kind of like mismatch or irrelevant kind of uh, incident that happened that causes the company to drop, it doesn't make sense. So yeah. those kind of times where you actually want to like pay more attention to yeah. la, and maybe even want to put into your watch list. So okay, yeah, uh, actually that's my strategy. Okay. It's very simple. All yeah. right. That is a, a bit morbid, but very, very <laughs> interesting way to look at things definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. So last question, which is a pretty long question. is a hi, nice to meet you. I currently... Uh, have a degree in finance or uh, sorry he's a student right mm. in a degree a finance degree he really likes finance and economics and i would like to ask you to give me a few advice that will be useful for my future career okay um while i am actually in a marketing and international trade uh background yeah so but does it mean that ha i mean has it helped me throughout my career path yeah. or life right so interesting, right? Interestingly, right? after my degree, I straight away just did sales. Uh, yeah. For as a, I joined a real estate agent company. Uh, the reason why I actually joined a real estate agent is because I want to learn how people invest in properties. Uh, I, I know because on surface, you won't learn this type of skill unless you actually join the industry. So let's say if you really want to learn a particular skill, right? Just go for courses, join yeah. a, or maybe even intern in that particular company to learn their skills or whatever thing that you want to learn uh, in a way. So actually to me, degree doesn't really uh, have any significant impact in life. I mean, certain degree, yes. Like for example, medicine. Yeah, medicine, yeah, that course, one is course. definitely less. Degree finance, 
to certain extent, yes, because you get to learn more about the accounting and it's easier for you to study the financial statements and whatnot. But if let's say you want to go for a businesses that you, let's say you want to sell like a cookie, for example. Yeah, I mean, you need to learn a little bit of accounting, but you also want to learn how to pick the cookie, how to make it nice, Correct. yeah, how to market it and all sorts of things. Uh. So don't stop just because uh, you actually got a finance degree, then you stop learning. I mean, there's still, there's more things to learn actually in life. Uh, yeah, if you feel that there's any skills that you need to improve, for example, you want to go for programming, just go for programming courses. Uh, that's actually my thing. Yeah, yeah, just don't stop learning. So specifically for if you're someone who has a finance degree and you're passionate about finance and economics, great. Um, as you met, as uh, Jonathan mentioned, right, uh, finance is going to be helpful for you in the reading, like understanding some of the technical terms. Yeah. Uh, and usually, if you want to enter the field, uh, it it's quite useful. It's not as technical as like medicine. Yeah. But certainly, when people are looking at your CV by and large, for fairly or unfairly, uh, they will prioritize you lah mm. if you have a finance degree. Now, um, if you're interested in finance and economics, you also have to ask yourself like what is it about these subjects that you enjoy? So is it the investing portion? I suspect part of it, that's true. But if you like economics, for example, you may be interested in, you know, economic policies. And if that's what you like, then perhaps, you know, consider, you know, working in the government, you know, positions where, you know, they will discuss and they like to craft public policy and things like that. Um, but the key thing is, uh, in terms of whether or not you're a finance degree student or any student for that matter, uh, the key thing you have to realize is that like tax, like finishing your degree is the beginning, not the end. I think what happens, uh, especially in an Asian context, is that people tell their children, tell their students that you know you go work hard, study hard, so you get a good degree, and so that you get a good job for the rest of your life. Yeah, that is one of the scariest and uh, quite frankly, probably irresponsible advice you can ever be given because having a degree is probably just, just the beginning. Yeah. And you have to realize that the textbooks that you learn and the reality can be very, very different. It's far more, I would say, important to actually follow someone that you admire. So for example, if you want to be very good at um, analyzing companies. Look for someone who fit that bill, someone that you want to become, right? And it, oh, unless you have certain financial issues, which I obviously wouldn't know because you know everybody is different. But bar that, don't care too much about the amount of money that you're going to make. Yeah, it's much better to go and work for someone that you admire, even if it means less money than what you could get if you went somewhere else. And the reason is because, sure, you can get a st higher starting salary at any company, mm. but if you're not working with someone who you can look to and says like, I can improve based on this person who is ahead of me, then what happens is that you will stagnate. So you may have a high income at the start, but then you are maybe working amongst people who are not, you know, uh, up to where you want, you know, uh, people you look up to, right? Yeah. Then you stagnate and you don't really grow. Of course, the idea is to have high income and, you know, have a very good mentor, right? Yeah, but, but that's usually, the, that's yeah, the perfect scenario. That's the perfect like, scenario. Yeah, so yeah. go for someone who really you can look up to because that will compound and you will excel your job because now you are learning from one of the best or the be one of the best you can find. You're probably going to enjoy working with him. You're going to enjoy working with him, working on the things that you guys are working on. And this is some of the intangible benefits that I can say that every student, you know, finance or not, uh, should have. Yeah. So I think that's about it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you guys like this kind of content, let style, us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when these new videos are out for you. And yeah, anything we'll see you, you in wanna... the next video, I guess. Yeah. See you. Bye soon. bye. Bye bye.